good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Alpha Traders. Back for the next episode of uh, Crypto in Clown World. That's right, I said Clown World. That's where we're living. Shit is unreal. But anyway, what's going on with Bitcoin here, huh? We got our Alpha Trading Volatility Range Estimator up here with the daily, weekly, and monthly price action volatility ranges. And we also have a normal and Laplace distribution levels, four hour and daily. Daily levels are the white and blue cross lines. The skinny white and blue lines are each four hour candle. As you see, they change every four hour candle. So Bitcoin opened up the day to day. Now let, let's go back to yesterday's stream. Right here is when that stream started. And what did I tell everybody was going to happen? I said these bulls are going to push to this weekly R1 by the end of the day. Did they? They absolutely did. Absolutely did. Right when I got off the stream, two 15 minute candles, boom, right to the R1. It's like these uh, algos are watching the uh, live streams. We need to check who's in there. Time to fly might be an algo. Never know. Then, right before the daily close, we had a little drop. Opened up. What did Bitcoin immediately do? Came down to test the center of the new daily price action volatility range. Went down. Tested. What did it test? Top side of the weekly range. That's the red dotted line right there. Ran up. The algos ran it right back up to the 68.3 Laplace distribution range on the daily. Back down. Bounced it off the center of the daily range. Back up to this top side of the daily. Do we see how this just works? And then this new four-hour candle right here, they run it down. Where did they run it down to? To the dollar, that skinny blue line there. First standard deviation, normal distribution on that four-hour candle. Kind of got stuck here for a little while inside of this weekly price action volatility range. Earlier in the day, they ran it right back up to the 68.3 Laplace distribution range. So a little bit of a slow bleed down to the center of the daily range. Now here we are. Okay. The new daily price action volatility range is about $43, super tight. Could have saw this coming a mile away. It was a range all day, right? Pretty much ranged. Two days in a row now, the Bitcoin data set has closed above the top of the weekly range. The top of the weekly range is above today's bottom 68.3 Laplace distribution range. So. Now, what's going to happen from here? I mean, pretty much did a little play by play by play the BTC data set from yesterday coming into the new day here. I was telling MJ before the stream stream started, I will be surprised if we do not get a pump to the top side here. Everything is set up for this to pump to the top side from what I'm seeing. Now, there's probabilities both ways, right? The bears can raise their ugly heads back up and try to push this down. It's all about how are the bulls going to defend this weekly price action volatility range going into the weekend. Okay. SPY went sideways today. Didn't have a lot of action at all. The NASDAQ mini futures right now, oh, they're a little bit down. Nothing to really look at. Gold and silver doing, just hanging out, doing what they do. Gold's up a little bit, right? Good for the gold bugs. I'm sure they're all excited. Went from $1,800 stable gold to, you know, raise $71. Whee! I'm sure they're freaking out. Everybody's excited. I told you the dollar was going to be backed by gold again. This is the beginning. Here we go. Sound money. <clears throat> Not in my opinion. The only thing more manipulated than gold is the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is in shambles. Bitcoin is sound money. It's a no-brainer. There's high inflation. High inflation's good for Bitcoin. All that added up together to me tells me Bitcoin's going to pump. But where are we? Right? Three weeks in a row, hanging out right below the mean of the projection from the 41K low. That's where we're hanging out right now. We're just bumping, Bitcoin's bumping its head against this mean. 
when we close a weekly candle above the mean of that projection, we're going to fly up to the top side of the 68.3. It's about 56K. Going into next week, it's right at about a, just a tick below 56.6. Okay. That'll wake some people up. And this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a weekly 2SD move. If this week can close up here around the second standard deviation, 46.1, I'd love to see a big pump. It's set up for it to take Bitcoin back over 50K. You're definitely going to see that run up to 56. Now, what happens there? Yet to be known. And there's probabilities of both sides. The bulls did push this back up into the 68.3 Laplace distribution range. All right, we got stuck here, remember? Remember when we dropped down into this range, tested the downside, look at that wick, to the dollar, to the bottom side of the 68.3, then we went sideways for a few weeks. Had a couple weeks where we were stuck right here, below, in, or below the mean and on top of the bottom side of the 68.3. Then we had the dump. Right then, we had the 38, the uh, 33k low, 33.1. That where did it bounce to the dollar from the first standard deviation normal distribution? Price action's been up ever since on a weekly level. Right, this looks good to me. This looks real good. Got to close a weekly candle above this mean right here, though. Go over to our ultimate power mean band on the four hour all day today, right? Especially. The last three candles, right? The last half of the half of the day on these four hour candles came down, bounced, right? Staying above the nine length variance log moving average. It has crossed up the 33 length variance log moving average. They have both crossed up the reverse wave trend. These move these variance log moving averages have found support on the 99 here. The reverse fissure, reverse wave trend, both look bullish. Will the bears try to push down and give a firm test of this reverse wave trend? It'll tick above 43. They could. The nine variance log moving average, though, is supporting price action right now. So that's yet to be seen. The ball is in the bull's court here, right? The Bitcoin bulls are trying to push this, and everything I'm seeing on the variance or on the uh, volatility range estimator. It's telling me this thing's going to the top side. Let me see here on the 12 hour real quick. All right, nine length variance log moving average. Finding support on what? The 99, turning back up. Look earlier, the last 12 hour candle of the day, we had that dip down, tested a power mean right there and the nine length. Here we are, boom, sitting on the 12 hour. Let's see what yesterday, if anything. Yeah, didn't even didn't even get all the way down to the Gaussian mean of the deviation bands. That's what the skinny white line is. And look what happened, right? Look what happened. We getting we're getting across here. The nine length variance log moving average, right, is crossing up the thirty three as we speak. Next stop, it's about tick under forty six. That's the ninety nine length. There we go. And here's that reverse fissure on the daily sitting up there right above 50K. I'm looking for that to get tested. Of course, we got to get by this 99 first. First attempt, kicked it down. Found support. Found support on what? The 33 length variance log moving average. And that kicked it right up back above the reverse wave trend. Powerful little Bitcoin bulls. Got to see what's going to happen though. So let's check this out. Up up here on the two day because we just got a new two day candle, correct? I believe so. Let's see here. Let me make sure. Where's my damn phone? Yep. Okay. Yeah, no bear div on log return Z score. But let me see some real quick. Yeah, no, we good. No bear div on the returns oscillator either, right? Had a little kick down right here. No problem. 
problem at all, in my opinion. Um, fishers are still heading up. And these fishers, they have a lot of room to go to the top side. I mean, a lot. I mean, look at some of these pumps, right? We're way down here. The volatility bands are expanding. And the bottom side are sloping up, right? I like that. Uh, on this two-day candle, though, yeah, I, I want to see a pump. I want to see a run to 45 again. I want to see this two-day candle, right? It says the correlation is decreasing to the top side, and we're heading into randomness. It's been in randomness. But when you see that decrease, that's the price action. It's going to walk down. I like the entropy percentile, though. Negative correlation contraction. That's good. Same thing. Uh, let me see here. Volatility percentile is a little different. I do like the historical volatility Z score, though. It's still heading to the top side. It's all, and the correlation is positive, just a little flat right now. I want to see expansion on volatility, and I want to see the correlation pop strong positive, maybe even go significant positively correlated on that Z score of historical volatility. But right now, on this two day, right, it's contracting, heading into positive correlation. Going to have to get a strong move here and switch that up. I like the entropy percentile. What you doing over there, big stone dog? Oh, poor guy. We're choking up something. Uh, let's see. And the DLP on the two-day, obviously. Been building these uh, candles to the top side. Always like seeing that. I always like seeing that. God bless you, big wolf. Let's see here. The daily. Just kind of docs over here having a good hip shit. Uh, the daily's kind of flat entropy percentile. Um, it was contracting, right? We had those good days moving to the top side. If we see the volatility pick up, we're having significant correlation on the volatility positive, right? That's good. Got to have some. We need volatility to come in here on the daily. It's at a 47%. There's a lot of room to expand. A lot of room. And if that does happen, and if you see expansion on the volatility percentile, on the Shannon entropy percentile, if you see expansion, you're going to want to see this correlation break to the top side. The fissures look good. Fissures look good. There is no bear divergence at all whatsoever. It's clean chart, actually. There's no div to either side on the daily. That's always a good thing. What you doing, big wolf? Look at this big, pretty guy. Hi, buddy. You licking my elbow? Who's daddy talking to? Is he talking to his magical internet friends? Uh, give me a quick pet. <laughs> All right. Back to business. Oh, he's nudging me. <laughs> You're such a good dog. Quit. <laughs> a big-ass tongue. It's like a cow tongue. Uh, let's see here. That's about it on daily. I do like this. <laughs> I'm getting poked and prodded by a 130 pound dog right now. I do like this being above the Gaussian mean. The bands are starting to expand. I mean, it's time to push this thing. 47. What's the second at? 52. I'm looking for this first standard deviation band to get tested at this point. At least. At least. Right? We're talking 47.7. That that's the, that'll be a beginning to making that 50k run let's see that happen first up to 12 hour the 12 hour variance is almost done it's a full pullback here right negatively correlated the whole time you see this variance on the 12 hour turn up and have an outlier 50k is on its way mark my words let's see here He's setting up some no we're not uh, no diff. That's what I like about this daily and 12 hour. There's no divergence to either side. Balls in the bear's court. This DLP, all the, all these, I mean, there's no div, right? No div. There was a little bit on this, right? High, higher high. That played out, went down. Bounced off the reverse wave trend on the 12 hour. And now you, you've had this 12 hour. Returns oscillator coming down. It's in the midst of a bullish reset right now, in my opinion. 
this could fa- this could be a really powerful pump if this thing plays out, especially con- the Shannon entropy percentile is contracting negatively correlated. I like seeing that, you know. But uh, you always want to watch if this is contracting or expanding. And if you get a big move all of a sudden, you want to look for the breaks in that correlation. Like if we get a lot of volatility coming in here right now, you can see on this first 12 hour candle of the day, the volatility is expanding. It's negatively correlated. It's not a good thing. But then you've got the percentile of Shannon entropy. It's negatively correlated contracting. So that leads me to believe if this volatility really pops. This correlation is going to break to the top side. And this Shannon entropy percentile will expand and break to the top side. Good thing. I'm getting mugged by dogs. Oh, there's big dog. Come here, buddy. Come here. Let's show your massiveness. Come here. <laughs> That's my big boy. Yeah, say hi. Say hi, big pretty boy. I'm an Anatolian shepherd. Of course, the other one's getting jealous. Got to pet him. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy's such a lug. Aren't you? Look at that. Arr! How would you like to get bit by that alligator mouth? Get over there. All right, I'm done with you. <laughs> Good Lord. Okay. Where was I at before I got mugged by the doggies? Turn Z scores pretty high on the four hour. But from what I'm seeing on the volatility range estimator, I mean, wow, well, man, like I said, I'm going to be surprised if this price action does not pump going into the end of this week, especially. Right? Going into the end of the week, especially. And I'm going to take a quick peek at SPY, SPY and NASDAQ here to see what I'm thinking is going to go on uh, Thursday and Friday. Let's see. Like the twelve-hour variance is is pretty low again. So is the four-hour. This thing's due for a, just a rocket ship. This is what I want to see right here. This is the move I want to see. Right, I want to see the variance rise positively correlated. It's positively correlated now. If you see this four-hour rise and start to have an outlier, look out. Look out. Last time it happened, Bitcoin went from pretty much, what is that? Yeah, 36.4. It pumped about $5,400. Guys, we're at 44 right now. I'm looking for that 50K area to get rumped. Let's see what happens. Intraday. Right now, 90 minute going into the new day. Looky here. Look at the historical volatility Z score right now in the 90 minute. All right. Z score heading back up significantly positively correlated. I want to see the Shannon entropy percentile expand strong. It's positively correlated. And we, is there any div? No, there is not to either side either, which is good which is good. That's what you want to see. You want to see clean charts. And look at the log return Z-score on the 90-minute. It had an outlier on this little pullback here, right? It's turning up from the 99% confidence interval. If you look at the log return Z-score and the Z-score of historical volatility, 
Let's go. Let's go. Look at the volatility. Look at the look at the deviation bands on the 90 minute. Do you know what that means? I mean, this this thing, these bands, they start squeezing price action. You're gonna get a move. Everybody that understands that indicator knows that when these things squeeze on price action, you get a move. It's just the way it is. It's the way volatility works. Putting the squeeze down on Bitcoin, the king, you kidding me? The most volatile asset on the planet? Look out. Look out. Yeah, I, li I like this. This this could be a big day to the top side. Really could. Let's see here. <laughs> Getting called out in some discords right now. It's funny. Uh, let's see here. Everybody wants me to buy all this shit. It's like, hey, man, there's a limit. There's a limit to what I can do, right? It's like, I got so much money in NFTs right now. It would shock people. Got a lot. Crazy. Magical internet JPEGs. Oh, Bilbo, what are you doing? <laughs> Sometimes I don't know. I'm not actively trading the markets, but for some reason, I'm just all kinds of into NFTs. 90 minute looks great. I'm all over the place, aren't I, kids? Just bear with me. The 15 minute. Hmm. 15 minutes. Definitely been rejecting off of the uh, reverse Fisher. Huh? Got to get by this on the 15. You see this 15 minute pump up close some 15 minute candles above this fissure. We're going to get a run. We are going to get a run. Uh, no div, no div, no div. Yeah, this thing's looking good for a pump here at some point. 100% man. Let's get it going on. Let's, uh, let's take this dog and pony show. I want to see what Spy did today. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very nice, right? Spy, pre-market, not a big gap. Dump down to where? Bottom side, weekly price action volatility range for Spy. Where did it bounce off of? The first support level. This green line right here is the first support level for the daily price action volatility range. It was right here. Just snuggled up right below the weekly. Look where SPY closed yesterday. It closed yesterday above the middle of the price weekly price action volatility range. Bears tried to dump it out right before the end of the day. The bulls are like, no, thank you. No, thank you. Even right towards the end of the day, make a, made a run to the top side of the weekly. Tell me right now, if you see SPY close a daily above like 448.50, you're going to see an immediate push to this monthly range. It's at about 450. You close a daily above here. It's, it's I could take off. If I could take off big time. This is it's it's going to have a lot of resistance here. If Spy does get by here though, it's going to start cracking up to these weekly R1s. The first weekly R1 452. The second one is spread out way up here at 464. I could see tomorrow, if SPY cracks the top side of this, closes tomorrow's candle above this weekly, before the close on Friday, look for a $464 SPY. That's going to be one hell of a pump. And the SPY bears are going to be crying. Because if it gets up to there, going into the end of this month, you're going to see SPY up there around 480 new all-time highs. That is just my, that's the, what the probabilities are telling me, what I'm seeing on this, for sure. And I kind of like this wick down, right? I mean, I tried to, yeah, 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 I like this. This has all been taken care of here, in my opinion. I'm sure old Mr. Crown would agree with me if he is watching this stream, which I doubt he does, because he's tied up with tr traditional TA, getting all those noobs all kinds of wrecked. But that's okay. It's okay. It's doing good. It's doing good. <laughs> No problemo. What's the NASDAQ looking like right now? 
tone that down a little bit, Charlie. Uh, had a nice bounce off the bottom side of NASDAQ's weekly range right before the end of the day. Whoop, right up to the top. Right? Now look. Two days, in a, two days in a row. Over here and over here. NASDAQ. Mini E-Futures closed above the center of its weekly range. I'll tell you what. Over the night tonight, we're going to see this get pushed, in my opinion. We're going to see this get pushed. I'll run it, and I'm going to, I don't need to go over to Spice chart until the morning. Obviously, they are closed, but I'm going to check NASDAQs out here in a minute. But this is looking like it's wanting to find support on this new daily range. And it did stair step up. It did get tighter. And, and what happened? The daily range, the whole daily range is now above the center of the weekly on NASDAQ. This thing's going to make a push overnight. Uh, probably first standard deviation move, 14,837. I could see that. And SPY is going to open up. SPY, I'm telling you right now. If you see NASDAQ push up here, SPY is going to have a big day tomorrow. SPY is going to have a big day tomorrow. And then it's up to NASDAQ, right, by uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time on Friday to get its ass in gear and get back up in this monthly range. If not close above it, we could see a couple big days from NASDAQ and SPY. Don't, don't be shocked, all you little uh, traditional bears out there. We could be getting ready to see a uh, breakout going into the end of the week here on SPY and NASDAQ. And then coming into next week and going into the end of the month. A lot of people are going to get wrecked if they're trying to short sell these markets. From what I'm seeing, this shit's starting to turn around. Inflation, inflation, inflation. Man, a fuck inflation. That's my take on it, especially when it comes to Bitcoin. Let's go over to the regular charts on NASDAQ and see if the truths i'm spitting are really truths look at this four hour yeah look at this log return z score right it's just been dicking around down here at the bottom this thing's wanting to move up here for sure the variance kind of flipping over positively correlated around look at the fishers look at the entropy percentile this thing if this you see this pop what i just said with nasdaq it's coming true Definitely going to happen. Definitely going to happen. Positive, starting to go back into positive correlation. We, if, if When volatility comes into NASDAQ overnight here, this is going to the top side of that area I was just talking about. And why do I say that as well? Look at the four hour. Are you got, do you guys see all this hidden bull div? You see all this hidden bull div all over the place starting right here. No, this candle. One, two, three. Three points hidden bull div. This thing's ready to rocket ship. From what I'm seeing. Especially with this uh, bounce off of the 90% confidence interval to the downside. If you see the historical volatility Z-score drop heading in the negative or start pumping up into these higher confidence interval intervals going back up, look at it. So look at the correlation right now. It's flat. I mean, it's heading down a little bit. That's why you're going to see a move up here. But it's kind of just hanging on the, on the downside. If you see this turn back up to head back up into this 99% confidence interval and go positively correlated, this baby's taking off overnight. Especially with this entropy percentile. I mean, look, look how down it is. This baby wants to expand, and it is positively correlated right now. Keep an eye on that if you guys are, are playing this market. Well, yeah, volatility is contracting, negatively correlated. So is the entropy percentile. Yep. And... I mean, not really weak bear div at the most on the twelve hour. Look at the look at the variance on the twelve hour on Nasdaq. All right, it's it's down. It doesn't go any lower. It's right at it. It's barely at point four above where this baby can drop to. So, if you see this volatility come in, this is going to stay positively correlated. Probably run to the top side. See what the new daily brought. Mm. 
I like that the uh, the daily returns oscillator is above the zero mean. We're expanding though. You're going to want to see this correlation break back to the top side. And I'm telling you, if this volatility on that four hour plays out, it's going to roll right uphill. And this is all going to look good for NASDAQ to run up towards that, that uh, monthly range. And that is what I'm looking at for sure. Let me see if anything is sticking out over here in our wonderful shit coin land. Blue chip shit coins, right? Blue chip shit coins. <clears throat> Not really. Nothing sticking out. I'm just looking at prices and percentages and stuff. What's Cardano doing? Buck eight. Sticking to my guns and saying this thing's going to run to the top side. All the markets. Let's take a quick peek here. Let me load up a, uh, whoops, let me load up a chart here. I'm going to load up a couple charts first. Here, I'm, I'm going to go into the end of the day. Clear out some of these charts. Let's clear out some of these charts. All right. What are we looking at here? Four hour now. I want to see the daily. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Look at the sell pressure. Been decreasing this whole time. Right. Lots of buy pressure. This is a daily, by the way. Today, like it. This is what, remember, I was talking about. I want to see a continued decline in the sell pressure. That's what we're getting. Across the fucking board, man. Across the board, it's continuing to decline. Daily looks great. Daily looks great. Lots of buy pressure going on here. This thing's ready to pop, man. This thing is ready to pop. And while we're on this, let's uh, throw this in SPY real quick. Decreasing sell pressure, increasing buy pressure. Yeah, two-day. I mean, the sell pressure is decreasing. Keep an eye on this on the two-day for SPY. 12-hour or daily looks good, though. SPY is ready to pop. What about NASDAQ? Both kind of down a little bit. But in my opinion, the traditional market bears have had their time. They have had their time. I want to look at some correlation here. Let's see. It's my base chart. Get rid of. You guys all, yeah, let's talk about a little bit about this first. So we uh, delivered out your mom's boss. Got a lot of different settings now. This is on a variance log at moving averages. Powerful. Study it. All right. Study it. It's a good indicator. Deserves some respect. And it is your mom's boss. If you're out there, you dictator. Dumbass. This is your mom's boss, bud, right here. Yeah, it's okay. Don't cry. Okay, let's see here. Let me pull up. Let me pull up our Pearson. Where are you at? There you are, little after Pearson correlation. What do I want to correlate? I want to correlate Bitcoin to Spy. Come here. Bilbo, what are you doing? I'm correlating, correlating. It's on four hour, four hour. It's a daily saying. Yeah, positively correlated right now. Tell you what, you see Bitcoin and NASDAQ pop overnight. You're going to wake up to spy having a heyday on these freaking bears. That is good. That is good. I like the correlation. Let's see, right? Bitcoin, it was when Bitcoin was going up here those days, SPY was going down. It was negatively correlated. It's positively correlated again. Watch. I'll tell you what, right now, if you're trading traditional markets, specifically SPY, if Bitcoin pumps in this night session, right? Call it the old Asian session. The Aussies, Aussies, you're going to come in and buy some Bitcoin? 
Let's see what happens. All right. If Bitcoin pumps overnight, you're going to wake up to SPY pre-market just probably ripping. Keep an eye on it for sure. Keep an eye on it. And that's about wrap it up. I wonder if it's going to jump with that correlation. So anyway, if you guys are watching this on YouTube for the first time, we are alpha trading. We trade volatility, probability, and statistics. It doesn't matter what you're trading. Our indicators work on anything. If your kids are in the backyard trading football cards or whatever the hell these kids are trading today, I have no idea. I'm out of the loop. I never had children. I live vicariously through my nephews. But uh, these indicators work on them all, man. You can trade whatever you want. Powerful. Volatility, probability, and statistics. This is what the algorithms are trading. You'll want to be on the side of the algos. The algos aren't trading traditional TA. I don't care what any of these YouTube jimmies are telling you out there. They can talk talk to their blue in their face to me. It's not even an argument. We know what the algos trade, and we want to be on the side of the algos. Period. The end. I want to thank you guys for watching live in the Discord. Kind of had a small small gathering today. Well, that's because I we pushed the stream, the live stream back. That usually gets people a little off kilter, which is fine. That's why we record these. It, it just, this will be out on YouTube. So uh, with all that being said, the link to our Discord's in the description of all our videos. You can take a look in the shop channel, open up a support ticket, tell us what's on your mind, and wherever you live at, in this big, beautiful blue marble. Have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening. We'll see you tomorrow, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye, guys. <laughs>